Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're continuing with Innistrad and uh, we're going to look at Eldritch Onslaught which is a blue and red deck. So let's dive in and look at the deck list. Uh, so we've got 15 creatures, 9 instants, 4 enchantments, 6 sorceries, 2 artifacts, uh, 24 land and we've got a mana curve off to the side there. So um, as you can sort of see from the ratios it's probably, uh, we're going to have kind of, uh, in, we're in for red blue spells basically. But there's, uh, there's kind of an interesting twist on it in this deck. So. Uh, so the, uh, not the foil face rare, I was going to say, it's the foil face rare, it isn't, um, but my favorite, my preferred rare <laughs> out of the deck is Charmbreaker Devils, um, so 5 in a red for a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, at the beginning of upkeep, you return a uh, random instant or sorcery card from your graveyard back to your hand, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, uh, it gets plus 4, plus 0 in turn, so... Uh, yeah, I quite like this card. Um, the, you know, the return being random is fine because it's also free. Uh, this comes down to the late game where you've probably got a fairly stacked um, graveyard anyway. Uh, the fact, you know, if you cast an instant sorcery spell, this even just one, this immediately shoots up to 8-4 is pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's an, uh, it's an okay rare to have. Uh, the other rare is Sturmgeist, uh, so 3 and 2 blue for an XX Flyer. Uh, parent toughness equal to number of cards in your hand, um, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, so obviously it combos with itself. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Um, you don't have a huge amount of card draw in the deck from what I remember. There's a lot of kind of like discard, uh, draw and then discard, but not just straight up, you, you know, like plus 1, plus 2 card draw or something. Um, so this, this is okay. Um... I guess, uh, yeah, I think it's all right. I think it's all right. I, I like the Charm Breaker Devils more, but this is okay. Uh, having a uh, single Scourge of Gaia Reach, uh, so three and two red for a three three. Uh, gets plus one plus one for each creature your opponents control. Uh, so it does count all opponents, which is I think is going to be a standard word of going forth now. Really, um, yeah. Again, I think this is this is all right because what this comes down. Uh, yeah, on an empty board, it's a 3-3, three, three, uh, and it just grows from there. Um, obviously, yeah, it hasn't got anything. If it had something like Trample, it'd be, it'd be amazing, I think. But um, as is, I think it's all right. It just becomes like a big big fatty, I suppose. It's all right. Uh, two Murder of Crows, uh, so three and two blue for a 4-4 four, four fly, so uh, basically air elemental stats. Uh, when another, whenever another creature dies, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. Um you know, two things this deck actually wants to do is is draw and then discard. Um, the fact this ability, um, it's not like hard capped like uh, we kind of see uh cards these days are. You know, where you know they kind of curb the power a little by saying you know this ability only triggers like once a turn. Um, the fact this triggers on every creature death, uh, for free, um, to give you a free loot is is honestly pretty good. This is one of the uh, better creatures in the deck, I think. Uh, single pitch burn devils, uh, four and a red for a three three. When it dies, does three damage to target creature or player. Um, you know, kind of expensive at five mana, uh, for a three three. But you know, this you know the effect is pretty good. Like getting a free bolt, uh, when it dies is is all right. Uh, so then we have three deranged assistant. Uh, so one in the blue for a one one. Uh, tap, uh, move yourself for one, and you add one colors. So uh, this kind of plays into, uh, so it is, as I said, it's blue-red spells, but there is also this um, theme of kind of like, I guess like milling yourself and getting, because there's a lot of flashback spells in the deck of getting uh, flashback spells into your graveyard as quick as possible, so then you can cast them from your graveyard, and that's kind of almost like drawing a, an extra card. Um, yeah, or like treating your uh, graveyard as a sort of an extra uh, hand of cards for, with extra spells. Because there's actually there's quite a few flashback spells in the deck, and there are some cards that um, combo specifically with uh, with you know playing flashback spells. So yeah, this is this is pretty nice. Yeah, the fact it's getting flashback cards into your graveyard and also then giving you the mana to potentially cast them. So yeah, I think it's all right. Uh, two armored scab, uh, two in a blue for a one four, so big chunky blocker. And when it enters the battlefield, you mill yourself for four. So exactly the same as the range assistant. You're getting uh, flashback cards into your into your graveyard. Uh, two fortress crab, uh, three in a blue for a, a one six, so just big chunky blocker. Yep, that's all it's really here for, just to stall out on the ground. Two Merfolk Mesmerist, uh, one in the blue for a 1-2. Uh, pay a blue and tap, target player mills two. Um, I would say most of the time you're going to be, you probably want to do this on yourself to get those flashback spells into your graveyard. But, you know, if necessary, if you're kind of already set up, you could use this and kind of just slowly mill an opponent. Um, maybe kind of a risk in, in, a, in while play, if you were playing these decks against each other, these Innistrad decks, just because there's a lot of graveyard shenanigans in the Innistrad, so... 
you might potentially be giving your opponent resources, I suppose. But um, yeah, that's right. Um, a single Geist Flame. It's a shame there's only one of these. Uh, so one red mana uh, does one damage to a creature or player and flashback for four, uh, which I feel is quite expensive, but it is common, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, I kind of just wish the numbers were tweaked a little more, I suppose, because eh, that's fine, I suppose. Um, yeah, <laughs> just a very tiny little burn spell. Uh, a single rolling temblor. This is where we get into the flashback spells, obviously. A uh, single rolling temblor, uh, two and a red, does two damage to each creature with, without flying, um, and then flashback for six. So, yeah, it's pyroclasm, basically. Um, it's okay, kind of sweep the board. Um, doesn't necessarily help you win, because it doesn't damage your uh, opponent, but yeah, it's okay, it clears, clears out the board, I suppose. It's all right. Um, two desperate ray wings, uh, one and a red. Uh, Draw two cards and discard a random. So it is at instant speed for two, which is all right. Uh, the random discard obviously hurts it quite a bit. Um, you can obviously, you know, try and manipulate your hand a little bit. So, you know, whatever you discard at random isn't so bad, maybe. And you can flash back for two and a blue. Uh, so, yeah, again, it's all right. Just helps you find the other stuff, I suppose. Uh, three dream twists, uh, one blue. Uh, Type player mills three, and it has flashback for one and a blue. Um, so it's kind of pulling... You know, it's it's multi-use in the set. You can either use it on yourself to mill yourself for three and, you know, potentially get more flashback cards or if you wanted to like mill your opponent just for, like, I suppose milling them for six for three mana, which is, I suppose, not wonderful either. Um, it's okay. I think I think the intended, um, intended use is to do this on yourself. Uh, two Grasp of Phantoms, uh, three and a blue. Uh, sorcery, put Dark Creature on top of its owner's library. Absolute nightmare fuel art, I just want to say. <laughs> um, and flashback for eight, which is super expensive. But um, it is like a time ebb effect, so yeah, that's a pretty strong effect to have uh, to be able to do twice. Um, and then two Think Twice, one and a blue, draw a card and flashback for two and a blue. So yeah, it's all right. Just, uh, just drawing multiple cards, I suppose. It's all right. Uh, two silent departures, so this is essentially sorcery speed unsummon with flashback. Uh, so one and a blue just to return a creature card to owner's hand, um, and then flashback four and a blue. Yep, it's fine. Uh, single harvest pyre, uh, this is a bit weird, I think. Uh, one and a red. Uh, as additional cost to cast harvest pyre, exile x cards from your graveyard, harvest pyre does x damage to target creature. Um... I really wish it could hit players, but then it would be a lot more expensive because you know, it would just be better then, wouldn't it? Um, the thing is, like, well, I suppose you're milling yourself and you could just use this then to get rid of, uh, you know, the cards that don't have flashback because you've got really no other way of getting them back, I suppose. You could do it that way. Um, yeah, just I just kind of wish this been another, like, Geist Flame or something. Um, a single Into the Moor of Hell, uh, which is a great spell name. Uh, so four and two red, sorcery, uh, destroy a land. It does 13 damage to target creature, which is almost certainly enough to kill it. Um, yeah, this is uh, just, yeah, it's expensive, but it uh, has obviously a really big effect. It's kind of too late in the game, really, I guess, for that land destruction to really matter. Um, unless you can power it early with, like, deranged assistant, I suppose. Um, and 13 damage is obviously going to kill whatever you, uh, you point it at. So, yeah, it's all right. Just have one of those. Uh, so we have two Burning Vengeance. So this is kind of like one of the key cards of the deck, I would say. So two and a red. It's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, um, Burning Vengeance does two damage to type creature or player. So, yeah, every time you, you, you're you casting a flashback spell, you're also getting a bonus two damage in there. Um, I like that, unlike a lot of these kind of red enchantments that we get, where it's like, oh, if you do this thing that synergizes with the blocks, keywords, or mechanics you get extra damage or whatever. Because like we've seen these before, and they've usually been like four or five mana, which I always feel is too late in the game for it to matter. But this coming down turn three is sort of okay. Because um, by that point, if you when, by the time you've got three mana, you're starting to edge in the point where you can start affording some of the cheaper flashback costs, I suppose. So uh, in that way, it sort of uh, matches the curve, I suppose. And you got two of them, which is actually quite nice as well. Um, and you got like, I think it's about 15 spells in here with flashback. So there's plenty for this to synergize with. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Uh, two Curse of the Bloody Tome, uh, two and a blue. Uh, it's an aura curse. It goes on a player. At the beginning of the Enchanted Player's Upkeep, they mill themselves for two. Um, so again, I think the intended use is to put this on yourself and, you know, mill yourself, get an extra mill, uh, for two every turn, fill up your graveyard, potentially find your flashback spells. 
Um, I always think there's a chance that you mill yourself too much and you start losing like lands and other stuff that flashback, like Burning Vengeance doesn't, you know, if you mill Burning Vengeance, you can't really get it back, I don't think. So this might be one I think might be better to put on the opponent instead. But that's just my thoughts now. Um, self mill makes me a little squeamish. I think <laughs> just as um, I suppose that's the casual in me. Like I would be scared of uh, milling a card. Um, I really want to play. I suppose. Um, I know there's obviously can be huge upsides of it because you get you know dead draws out of the way. But uh, yeah, I I would I would if I was playing this deck I would put this on the opponent instead rather than myself. Um, and then a single cellar door, uh, two mana artifact, uh, three and tap, target player puts uh, the bottom card of their library uh, into their graveyard. If it's a creature card, you make a 2-2 zombie. Um, so yeah, again, you can do this on yourself to fill up your graveyard. If it's one of the, I think you've only got like 15 creatures in here, then you make a zombie, I suppose. Um, again, there's it's multi-purpose, you can do this on your opponent, because removing the bottom card usually never matters. Um, because the bottom card, most of the time, you're not really going to get that far in the game. So it, it was a card you weren't going to see anyway. Um, so if you do manage to get a flashback card from this, then it's really just all upside. And if it was a creature, I say that you weren't going to get to anyway because it was the bottom card, um, then at least again you still get something out of it. So a um, little expensive, I think, at three, uh, three to activate it. But yeah, you know, it's it's fine. I think it's like a fun effect to playing around with like the bottom card of a of the of the um, library. I think it's alright. Uh, then a single ghoul cooler spell, uh, just one mana. Uh, tap each player mills one. So at least this way, everyone gets affected by it, I suppose. Uh, and then 39 and 11 mountains. So uh, what could have been? <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, yeah, no, I think the uh, the card selection is kind of okay. Um, I guess what I would have liked to see, it's just so reliant on like... Because the flashback costs are really expensive, so it's really reliant on, I think, stalling out until you uh, hit that. And also, there's not that many spells that really target your opponent. Like, as from what I'm seeing, like, I think the... Because, like, your the flashback spells are not winning you the... Well, they're not, not exactly not winning you the game. But, um, you know, you're not burning your opponent out. Like, you might do a bit of damage here and there with, like, the Burning Vengeance, but I think, really, it's going to come down to you win with the the with the, um, Murder of Crows, uh, the Sturmgeist, like, the Charmbreaker Devils, because um, you got the spells to support them. Um, so, yeah, because I don't really think there was any direct burn onto opponents, really, apart from Geist Flame, and that's only one, and I say the Burning Vengeance. Um, so I guess it could have used some things to, you know, kick out more damage or buff up those uh, those key creatures. So I was thinking Rune Chanter's Pike. Uh, so two mana artifact. Uh, go, it was an equipment. A uh, equipped creature gets uh, first strike and plus X plus naught, where X is the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, which is, you know, 100% what the deck wants to be doing is like filling the deck with, filling the graveyard with instants and sorceries. And then you put, they put this on, you know, any of the creatures and, you know, it's almost certainly going to become a really, really big threat, really cheap to cast and equip as well. So I think even this is, if, if this was giving like plus two, plus naught and first strike, I think then it's pretty good. And obviously it just grows from there. Um, I thought a few Curse of the Pierced Heart would have been all right. So one in a red, it goes on a player. And at the beginning of the upkeep, they just take one damage. So this is a way just to, I guess, just keep having damage going on. Um, maybe. And Runic Repetition. I was actually really surprised this wasn't in here. Uh, so two in the blue. And you get an exiled flash card, um, flashback card back into your hand. So, you know, you potentially cast that card like then four times. Because once from hand, once from graveyard get Runic Repetition back into your hand, cast it again, and then flashback it again. So, um, yeah, I really suppose there wasn't at least one of these in the deck, because it, obviously it goes really well with what the deck's trying to do, which is a bunch of, let's say, flashback spells. Um, so, yeah, that was that was the deconstruction of the deck. If you've got any thoughts, stories, comments, opinions about this one, uh, stick a comment below. Uh, but I'll be back next time going to look at another Innistrad intro pack. But until then, thanks for watching and listening. Have a good day.